coming, what's, what, what is really hitting us already and what is about to just absolutely slam us and knock us down. And we don't have a lot of time. And yet we seem to be, we the collective community, seem to be arguing about things that we already know work uh, and, and that really don't take very much. Again, to put a piece of you know, paper or cloth in front of your face, it doesn't take that much. And we don't have a lot of time to get to the other side of those arguments. And so my plea, it's a plea, is that we please, please listen to the health experts. And we do what we may not want to do, um, but we got to do it. Uh, and we got to do it. Day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Boy, God gave us some rain through here. If you live in our area cold, I mean some rain came down. We're going to continue to pray for those folks up in Tennessee. We got to continue to pray for those folks in Afghanistan. We got to pray for those folks over in Haiti. You know what? We just got to pray for the whole world. And this pandemic thing, as you heard the doctor talking earlier, put your mask on. If you hadn't gotten the shot, go get the shots. It's very important. We want to be able to, to see another year. We want you to be in that year with us. But if you be foolish and don't take control over your faculties, and that's the mindset. Shots in the arms. Mask on the face. Leave these big crowds alone. So as we come today, we come to lift up the name of Jesus. And David says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world, they that dwell therein. You know what? When I think about another intro, man, what a blessing it is to be on the Lord's side. You get excited about that, but not only that, you get excited about the fact that Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And how many of y'all been in some weary land and wasn't he that rock? And you know what? He's our not only rock, but he's our joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So as we prepare to honor him, to worship him, to adore him and admire him, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is it? The king of glory is the Lord, mighty in battle. He's the king of glory. Our young people are on deck today they are singing out of their souls and i just thank god just to watch them throughout the years and now they come and help us and usher us into the presence of almighty god and you know that first song that they're going to do talking about great god god is a great god in fact he's the only true wise god our father so if you will stand where you are lift your hands as you praise and open your mouth great god we're there
Amen. Amen. Nothing like some young people to get your juices flowing. Amen. Talking about singing about a great God. That's our God, you know. That's that's who we serve. And uh, maybe if you own this uh, broadcast and you've never made him your choice, you ought to do that today. Hey, we welcome you to the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church virtual worship service. We're so glad that you tuned in and we're asking that you would uh, not only be prayerful, but that you would lift up your voices unto our God, for he's a loving God. And to our brothers and sisters that are at a distance, and it's so good that you could see me. And one day we'll get a chance to see each other, and boy, we'll get a chance to be doing those holy hugs. But up until this point, we just have to remain uh, with God's wisdom. Thank you for joining us. You know, if you're ever thinking about those maybe have never been here before, when we get ready to open these doors up back for regular consumer uh, visitations and welcome y'all to this place, we're located at 5401 52nd Street. Again, 401 52nd Street. We're in the heart of Fairfield, Alabama. Amen. So we welcome you to continue to pray for us. Listen, we're getting ready to pray, but I got a couple of prayer requests, emphasis that I want to ask you to be mindful of as you pray. And there's something about pray. Men ought to always pray and faint. That's what the Bible says. And there's something about the prayers of a righteous man or woman. It availeth much. We know that. And there's something about you don't have to work to learn how to pray. The Holy Spirit will pray through you if you just get out of the way and let him have his way. But I got a couple of emphasis that I want to put on personalities wise. I want you to continue to pray for Pastor Robert Twyman. He's one of our sister churches pastor here in Fairfield. Won't you be praying for him? Lift up him, lift up his family, lift up his church family. And then on yesterday, uh, one of our sons in the ministry, the right Reverend uh, Pastor Gerard Caldwell of the 6th Street uh, Peace Baptist Church uh, right here in our area. And one of their deacons named uh, Gooden, Gooden been a deacon now for a long time and and uh he expired he passed away yesterday so we want to lift up the Gooden family and we want to lift up the sixth street peace baptist family you know what we sure enough want to lift up that pastor because he has to preach through another situation of death be mindful of that then my friend uh, reverend charles thompson he he is going through uh, some issues in his uh, physical uh, life, uh, his health. He's having some issues. He uh, stepped down, resigned from pastoring uh, a year or so ago, uh, but now he is um, he's struggling with uh, with some illnesses. And I want you to be praying for the Thompson family, and please be mindful of that. Are we to be mindful of others? Yes, we we all do. We got to. And that's something about when we esteem others more than ourselves. God already taking care of what we stand in need of. Can I get a witness? Have there been situations in your own life that you put somebody else on the top and you just fell to the bottom and somehow God addressed your needs? Some of the needs that you didn't even know about, God made a way because him being the rock in the weary land, him being all-knowing. So I want you to take those things and please be praying for our children in these school systems. You know, we don't come to try to be negative, but we are realist. We are living in a fallen world, uh, but we do have a risen Savior. <laughs> That's where we get our joy. That's why we keep pushing on. And he, he's in the world today because he's in us. And so we want to be lifting them up because uh, the enemy is trying to do some things, and God is trying to do some things to wake people up to who he is. Uh, if we come back to him, a lot of these issues will be thwarted by himself, but we have to line up with his will. That's a word that I want to teach us today in our lesson today. The scripture reading is in the book of Mark. We've been studying the book of Mark for a uh, whole bunch of years, and we're doing a verse by verse study. It's in the 10th chapter. The 10th chapter, we're going to read verses uh, 46 through 52. Reading from the King James Version. I would, if you have your Bibles at, at home, those who are in the sanctuary, those that are driving, Lord, keep your eyes on the road. 
um, talking about Jesus heals Bartimaeus. Verse 46 says, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garments, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. That's a powerful amount of scriptures right there and very relevant for the time that we live in. And I know somebody's already been blessed by the reading of it. You take that and not only be hearers of it, become doers of it. Whatever it is, don't let nobody make you stop calling on the Lord. Don't let a situation make you stop. Don't make incidental things that may come in your life. Don't you let nothing stop you from calling on the name of the Lord. And you that are listening and watching, Whatever you're dealing with, don't deal with it no more. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for us. Let me invite you in, in prayer. Remember those prayer petitions of emphasis. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, as we come before you, almighty God. We come, Lord, with expectancy. We come with confidence. We come with holy boldness before you, O oh God, the rock of our salvation, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the bright and morning star. You are God and God all by yourself. You woke us up this morning because you watched over us all last night. You brought us to a day that we'd never seen before and never shall we see it again. You've already given us new mercies, great is thy faithfulness we honor you today God because of who you are we praise you today God for what you've done we follow you Lord because you gave us another chance and as we come this morning Lord we are sinners saved by your marvelous grace we pray in the matchless and most perfect and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ Lord hear our cry this morning our physical man, Lord, has been wrought, has been wounded, even now wandering. Lord, build us up now where we've been torn down. Pick us up where we've fallen. Give us your strength where we are weak. Mold us and shape us now, Lord. But we come, Lord, uh, confessing people confessing that we can't make it without you we come this morning lord confessing that there's no other god like you we come confessing the fact god that can't nobody do us like you have we honor you today lord even in the midst of trials and tribulations that we're flowing through god some things god are happening in this world because you're trying to get the attention of us Lord, you got our attention this morning, Lord. Have thine own way, O oh God. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and shape us now, we ask. 
Father God, those names that we've called out before you in the interim, we ask now, Lord, that you would be mindful. In fact, Lord, we can't tell you to go nowhere. You are already there. Lord, we can't tell you what to do. You know what to do. And Father God, our timetable and your timetable don't match. So Lord, have thine own way. Come when you desire to come. We say like grandmother and them said in the past, you may not come when we want you, but you're always on time. And so Lord, as we call those names again, we lift up the Gooden family to you and we pray God that in the midst of their loss, in the midst of death, the pain, sorrows, agony, God, that you would wrap them up and hold them. We pray now for the Sixth Street Peace Baptist Church and their pastor, the right Reverend Gerard Caldwell. God, give them what they need to get them through this moment of anguish. Father, we lift up First Baptist Fairfield and we lift up the congregation and most so, Lord, we lift up their pastor. We pray now for Pastor Robert Twine. We pray, God, that your hand rest upon him. Lord, you are able to do. You steal the bomb in Gilead. Have thine own way. And, Father, as we think about who else we should be praying for, we pray for our children, Lord, those local, those on the national front, God, those that are returning back to school systems. Lord, with all the upheaval, Lord, we pray, God, that you would give them your protection. Then, Master, we not said a word for our church, but we lift up our church to you. God, we, we don't have to ask you a whole lot of things. We know what your word says, that you own everything, and you own everything, and you own us. You've already made a way. So, Lord, have mercy, not only upon us, but this entire world. We ask it all in the matchless, most perfect and powerful name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Shout with me together. Say amen. I'm going to shout it like you know it. Amen. Say amen. Amen. That's something about coming to church. It's been a little bit different in these last 17 months. Uh, being able to looking at uh, empty pews and looking at a red dot on a camera. And you've been sitting in your own comfort station places and been having to look at the boob tube. And But you know what? We can have church. You don't need a crowd to have church. You just need to know see him high and lift it up. And when we think about it, our young people going to come back and help us and usher us into furtherance, the presence of God, talking about all the glory, all the glory. It doesn't belong to us. I heard a song this morning being uh, sung by somebody, and they said, we want the glory of the Lord. No, you, you, God's glory is for himself, but he will honor us if we honor him. So let's sing about to God all the glory. Come on, shout. Amen. We're there. I give you 
Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. He gets all the glory. Amen. I mean all the glory. If you're not clapping your hands at your house, boy, I'm telling you what. Give God all the glory. He deserves the glory and the honor. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Got a treat for you today. He's been he's been out a long time. His, uh, he's the executive chef. At the uh, the UAB uh, system over there in Birmingham, and uh, they've been going through it as a hospital, and they've been going through I mean all kinds of stuff. He took a sabbatical for a bunch of months, and uh, Reverend Kelly and Reverend Olivier been been hitting a little mist, been pre been preaching and carrying on, and helping me out, giving me a break, and uh, we've been having to kind of skip over. Uh, Reverend Johnson because he was busy with the system over there trying to get folks to come to work but he's in the house today and he got a word from the Lord I'm going to introduce to maybe just a few folks that never been on our service before but introduce to you who already know him I call him the preaching chef <laughs> and uh, he is the right Reverend Donnell Johnson He's going to come and preach out of his soul. In fact, he's going to get out of the way and let God do what he does always. Amen. Clap your hands for Reverend Johnson. Amen. Repeat after me. Say, Reverend Johnson, preach the word of God. Preach the word of God. Reverend Johnson, preach the word of God. God bless you, Reverend Johnson. Amen. Let us uh, pray and thank for this preaching moment from my pastor. Not only that's my pastor, is my brother. We've been together for so many years and we were just reminiscing on that before he got up and said those words. So let us pray, Father, we honor you and we thank you and we're so grateful and we're so honored and you've been so great and so good to all of us. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. Now, Father, I ask that you lead me in a mighty way that I can preach your word. May I be here that someone might hear and say, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, uh, Pastor, I've already read the text earlier, and I'm going to read one verse coming from Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 46 to 51, and I'm going to read verse 51. And Jesus 
answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Amen. I'd like to use for a subject this morning a time to change. Time to change. There was a um, older man uh, from the mountains. Him and his son, uh, who came to the big city, uh, they wasn't used to, you know, nothing. They have didn't have a TV or anything. They was lived up in the mountains. Well, they found themselves at a hotel and. Um, they found themselves standing in front of an elevator. Of course, they didn't know what the elevator was. As they were standing there, they saw this old woman around about 100 years old, I would say a pastor, bent over, and uh, she went into the elevator. They didn't know. And they saw the doors close. Well, within probably about one minute, the doors open. Came out a very attractive young lady, very beautiful. An old man from the mountain, not knowing what was going on, he looked to his son and said, Go home and get your mama before we can run her through this thing. Well, we know change, we wish change would come like that, that we could get in the elevator and we could just change like we want to. Uh, but that's not possible today. And, 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 and so in Mark, the uh, 10th chapter, we meet a man named Bartimaeus today. And he was a blind man who sat on the side of the road in Jericho. He was a beggar. He begged for money and for charity as people passed by. He had loan. And this is the problem as he begged. He had really given up. Because back then, uh, you know, you the occupation was that you had to do some labor. There wasn't no secretary jobs, there wasn't no office jobs, there wasn't no desk jobs, there wasn't none of that stuff. So he found himself on hard time that in order to take care of himself, he had to beg. But that is when something happened wonderful in his life. Jesus came to Bartimaeus' town. So blind Bartimaeus knew it was time for a change. And he knew Jesus was the only one who could make it happen. Bartimaeus did not miss his opportunity, did not miss his chance. And I said to all of us that look deep down in our life and see what we need to change today. Jesus came to Jericho. Bartimaeus community, and today he's come to our community. He comes to Alabama, your community, Jesus came to Bottles Mass and he comes to you. He changed Bottles Mass life and he wants to change all of our life also. Don't miss your chance to have your life radical change today by following Jesus as your Lord and Savior and he will transform your life. Do what Bottles Mass did. Bottles Mass today gives us in this particular text today when we're talking about is a time to change he gives us four facts today about change and one of the facts that he gives us number one is desire change yeah 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 you got to desire change now when I look at the word desire it, it, it is a strong feeling a wanting to have something, a wishing for something to happen. So you got to desire this. Does that mean that, 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 that you want to change, uh, that you need to be serious about your change? Now, 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 now you can't uh, hang out with the devil Monday through Friday and expect to come into church on Sunday and be changed. Uh, you can't be on a diet and eat rice cakes on Tuesday and eat 10 pieces of fried chicken on Friday if you desire a change. 
And, and so let's, let's, let's look at his condition here, what, what he was going through. Bartimaeus wanted to see. He wanted to see for one thing. Uh, he had never seen sunrise before. He had never seen a, a, a beautiful rose. He'd never seen a garden. He'd never seen a river. He'd never seen water. He'd never seen the stars. He'd never seen the moon. He'd never seen the sun in his life. Bartimaeus lived in a blackness world devoted to no color, no beauty. No wonder when Jesus asked him, uh, what do you want me to do? He replied that I want to see. Now, now, now there's some things that we must get straight today because uh, there is a blindness. There's a blindness, physical blindness, far worse than this, this physical blindness is far worse than another blindness, and that is a spiritual blindness. Yeah, I'm, I'm get to us today because he was physically blind, but there's a difference when you are spiritually blind. Uh, uh, you may have 20 20 eyesight. Not only that, 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 that when I had my, my surgery, I, Dr. Wells told me, she, he, she said, Rep. Johnson, you have 15 15, the sight of an animal. So, so, so you might have the sight of an animal, a, a, a 20 20 sight. But still be spiritually blind. Uh, hold up now. Uh, let, let me. Uh, uh, Helen Keller uh, uh, was once asked, Is it terrible to be blind? And she replied, Well, better to be blind and see with your heart than to have two good eyes and see nothing. The Bible speaks of those who are spiritually blind when it says that there are people who serve false gods. So, 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 so let's get back to this spiritual blindness prevents one from seeing how serious sin is. Yeah, we talk about change now. You got the desire to change. It, it, it says uh, it, it, it's a, it, it's, it, it is a bad thing when you're blind, when you're spiritually blind. It's blind when you are in fact that it is appointed for a man to die once. After we're standing up before God in judgment. If blind one to reality of hell, spiritual blindness prevent one from seeing the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who alone can save from sin and penalty. So by the mass has a blindness root in physical defect. Spiritual blindness is in the root in the work of the devil who does not want you to see light of the gospel of the glories of Christ today. So the devil wants you to believe that Jesus is just another man. He's a good man, perhaps even the best man who ever lived. But, but, but that's not sis. The devil has blinded the eyes of those who do not believe in Jesus Christ. Son, Bartimaeus was blind, but he did not want to stay that way. And I hope in whatever condition you're in and all of us today, that you don't want to stay that way. You want to have the desire. I have discovered... That no one ever wants to change sometime. Well, there's a way of changing today. And uh, i never forget when we was growing up, you had to be of a decent age to remember this. It was a sitcom that we watched when we was coming up. It was called Bewitch. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So love me some Bewitch. And, 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 and Samantha, she was the, the witch. I, I leave that with Montgomery who... Uh, this is Montgomery who played that part, but 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 Samantha was the witch, and she was married to Dara, yeah, yeah. and Dara he, uh, he he was just a model as they were using back in the way she was a witch. Well, well now there was their mother-in-law, uh, Andorra, who did not want, who did not want them to be together at all. And sometime when she got mad and every scene of the soul, she would change Dara into something. Into a frog, into a son, he didn't know his work. He didn't know what he was doing. He was changed all the way into something. Well, 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 uh, they had sometime called Dr. Bombay. Come on now, you've seen Be Wish, you know what I'm talking about. They were called Dr. Bombay in somewhere. He might be ice skating or skiing or somewhere when they bring him in, but he appears there. He tried several things, pokers, pokers, and all of that stuff, and sometimes it didn't work. And Dr. Bombay had to go back to the table. But Dr. Bombay was yet able to change him back. And Jesus has the power 
to change us back today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Martin Luther King, uh, who fought for African Americans in and, and, and civil rights, he was beaten in the street. He was beaten with five holes, jail right here in Alabama, and his home bomb by hate in the end. He was actually even killed for this right, but the right to fight. He recognized, Martin Luther King recognized that that need to be a change. And that need to be a record. That's why we can sit here today because of what Martin Luther King did in change. But not only did he do it, God helped them to do what he needed to do. And so there has to be a desire. Come on now. When, when, uh, blind by the mass had, 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 couldn't see at all. But he heard about Jesus. He heard about the faith. He heard about what he was doing. He was not going to miss his opportunity, so he had the desire to change. Now, come, come here, Paul. Let me get Paul on the road to Damascus because, because you got to look at Paul here on the road to Damascus. That, that, that sometime, uh, about a man who was uh, blind physically. And about a man had to be healed from his blindness. Paul, who was on the road to kill Christians, had to be blind to be healed. Sometimes God had to blind you sometimes. Sometimes he had to heal your blindness. Yes to desire. So are you willing today to uh, shed blood for change? You're so desperately needed, and that's all of us. Are you willing to oh, wrestle with the angel like Jacob did? And even suffer a broken bone for your blessing. Change take sacrifice. But are you willing today to make this sacrifice? So if we look at blind bottom ass. Who desires change? He wanted change. He saw Jesus coming through. So there has to be number one a desire. A desire to change. Number two in verse 47 it talks about you had to acknowledge your personal need. Your personal need. It says in verse 47, and when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and said, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. So as soon as Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus. Now watch this. Because you got, you got personal need. See, you get some personal needs. That you got it. You might want to change. You, 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 you might not be a good spouse. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you may not be a. Uh, well, may I say this? If your wife and you ain't cooking for your husband, you might need to cook. Yeah. Now, you might need to make a change. Uh, what I'm talking about. If your husband and won't take care of the yard yeah. or do what you need to do in old clean up other folks' house, you might need to make a change. We got to look in. To us individually, because we can see who need to change, but you got to look and see where you need to change. Bartimaeus had a personal need, so you got to acknowledge your personal need. As soon as Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus, he instantly, not only that, he instantly began to shout out to attract Jesus. Come on now. Creating as much fuss as possible, as much noise as possible. He could above the crowd, all the noises and stuff, and you can't be quiet when it comes to change. This is Bartimaeus acknowledging his need when he shouted out faster and he confessed it publicly he, he did not approach Jesus secretly he, he did not quit about asking someone uh, uh, close to him to, uh, could, could, could you get a word to him I, I need to change I don't need somebody to get a word to him I need to get a word to him by myself he had a desperate need and, and, and he accepted the fact he wanted the help of Jesus Christ no matter no man has adequate concept of Jesus when he first come to Jesus. No man understand Jesus until after he have, he is saved and has received the Holy Spirit in his life and learned Christ. So he cried out by the mass, said he wanted to acknowledge my personal need. He cried out for mercy, not for anything else. He was blind, he was, he was a beggar, but yet he did not cry out for a house. He did not cry out for a car. He did not cry out for a spouse. He cried out for the most basic need that met that he said, have mercy on me. So when you get your opportunity to get to Christ, when you get your opportunity to do that, make sure you're asking 
for the right thing. Don't go up there like he's a Santa Claus. One of the top stories today, he is personal, personal, personal need. It has to be your personal, your personal need. One of the top news stories was in the, in the, in the, in the uh, news a while back when the Olympic was. It, it, it was, um, um, what's her name, the little girl, uh, uh, the little one that, 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 that bagged out Simone. Yeah, Simone. Simone. In, incredible. I watched her. She had a lot of tents on her. Uh, she was one of the world's most famous gymnasts. Even though she won many awards, been spoken of very highly and praised for her almost perfect skill, uh, she became what some people would call that was a traitor because she stepped out of the Olympic. For doing what was best for her because of her personal needs. The 2020 Olympic Games to focus, she pulled out the focus on her mental health. See, that has to be your personal. What's personal like Bobby Mayer did? She had to focus on her personal. She had to be more down aware or maybe even prepared for the backlash. Uh, she would have received in spite of it all. The news and the critics. She stood firm on her decision to leave gracefully. She left the noise behind her and so she could walk in peace and lie before her. She had to witness her personal need. As we go for change, Bob Mayer says, I had to acknowledge my personal needs. Believers have the responsibility to acknowledge that they are not perfect. And most of all, that they are not God. The Bible tells us in the book of James that if we have any needs such as wisdom, we are to ask a generous of God. And once we ask, we must ask in faith, recognize that only he can fully, wholly supply not just that need, but all of our need. And so we see here today we must Trust that God knows and cares for our needs. Do you ever feel that God is so busy with important concerns that he is possible not aware of your needs, even that when you feel this way, a small thing, just as James advised us, believers are to ask God for what they need in faith, and we must realize that he will deliver this. Matthews 6 and 31 through 32 said, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father know that you have need of all of these things. At one time, Jesus said, don't worry about having enough food. Not worry about having enough drinks or clothes. Your heavenly father already knows your need. Do you have any concerns today that you think we're not, God is not interested in? There's nothing too large. There's nothing too big that God cannot solve today. So, 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 uh, in fact, one would be that you have to desire, if there's going to be a time for change, you had to desire a change. A uh, point two was said that not only the fact two was says that you had to acknowledge your personal need and number three says this and this is huge and this is big don't worry about what people say uh, well, come on it, don't worry about what people say in verse 48 in verse 48 by the mass and many charge him that he should hold his peace in other words you ought to shut up by the mass but but he cried he cried the more and a great deal thy son of david have mercy on me. So you can't worry about what people said because people said uh, uh, that's Willie Wells' son and that's uh, Mike Clyde's son. Uh, that's our daddy's. Because uh, our daddy was in the neighborhood and they did, uh, you know, it once in a while back then, they, they drunk a little something and you might have seen them drinking. And so when they see her, they said, that's Willie Wells, boy. That's uh, Mike Clyde, boy. But there has to be a change. Has to be a change. So you can't worry about what people said. To be like bottom mass, you must desire change. You must stop procrastinating. 
you must not worry about what other people will say. Bartimaeus did not care what other people thought. He needed Jesus and he would not let the opinions of others sway him. As he cried out, Jesus, people around him began to, to, to warn him to be quiet. The Greek word translated warn means to rebuke, imply, to threaten him. But, but that was, they were saying, you better quit or else. The Greek verb in imperfect tense, which indicated continued action, they continue, pastor, they continue to talk about him. They continue to rebuke him. To rebuke him in the next verb is able, is an imperfect verb. It continue to say, he shouted out. Come on now. Even though they talked about him, say where he came from, but he still shouted out. Even though they say he was a dope addict and his daddy didn't do good, he shouted out. Although it said mama was this and the daddy was that and his sister and brother was that, but he still shouted out. Even though they say he came from the dark side of the river, but he still shouted out. Even though they say he lived in the bottom, not on top of the hill, but in the middle of the hill, but he still shouted out. Son of David, he said, so all of me said, now have mercy on me. Blind Bartimaeus did not care what people thought of him. Uh, he, he, he would not be ashamed into silence. He would not be quiet or intimidated because he wanted change. That is the point that Bartimaeus had reached. Jesus was his only hope. Jesus is our only hope today when it comes to change. Unlike people who turn away from Jesus at the first sight of opposition, a difficulty, Bartimaeus' faith compared him, compared him to go on. How sad it is when people in our day care more about what other people may say than they can do about getting to Jesus. You may feel, you may feel that people may call you a fanatic. You may feel that people might call you a Jesus freak. But, so what if they do? They cannot change you. They can't do nothing for you. They cannot save you. And they cannot give you eternal life. I am going to ask all of us to do something today that will call for courage on our part. I'm going to ask all of us to let Jesus change us, and we need to trust him as our Lord and Savior. So you can't let uh, people uh, get next to you. You can't worry about what people say because then you'll find yourself in the worry. There was a man who was at the airport, and uh, he wasn't dressed very well, and people started talking about him. And they started asking what flight he was on, and they started telling the man, uh, that he didn't smell well, that his clothes didn't look good. And he started, after a while, worried about what people said. But he knew he had to catch his flight. And they started telling him stuff about, you ain't going to be able to get on that plane because they ain't going to let you get on that plane looking like that in them clothes. So it upset the man. The man got in such a hurry by listening to him and worrying what people say. He got in such a hurry to catch his airplane. So this man began to run. To run, they got him worried, they got him messed up while people say, begin to run, huff and puff, down toward the gate. While he was running down past the gate, he passed a guy dressed in a pilot uniform. And, and the guy asked him, he said, hey man, you, you, you need to slow down, you're so out of breath. Uh, where are you in a hurry to? Well, the man said, uh, I'm trying to catch my flight 4047625. He said that I'm late for my plane and I don't want to miss my plane. Uh, where well, he proceeded to tell the guy about the flight. Well, this uniform guy who was dressed as a pilot, he said, look here, man. Don't worry. Don't be in a hurry. I'm the pilot of that plane. Don't you be in no hurry. Don't worry about what people say about you. It's now he says to the man, said, now, is it, 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 I didn't say nothing about your clothing, and I didn't say nothing about what you look like. He says, the pilot is chilling. You should also chill. So don't stress yourself out about things unnecessary about people talking about you and worry about what people said when you desire, when you desire change. Wait on God and trust that if he is taking his time, that you're all right, too. Well, don't worry about what people said. Come here on prodigal son who took his money, pastor, say he want all his inheritance. He took his money and he went on out there, messed it up. I'm sure Tim, he was with somebody because I got my money. I would have found you. I would have found pastor and probably had a good old time. 
And y'all would have been with me while I spend the money because I know y'all are spending on me. And so as he spent his money, he ran out of money. But yet he ran out of money. When he ran out of money, he had to lead old friends. Then he got to the, the pig hall where he had to get in the slop and stuff where he didn't have any money. And he had some folk with him then. But he realized, I can't worry about what people said. I got to go back home to my father. And as he went back, as the prodigal son went back, he didn't worry about what the people said when he was spending the money, when he was balling. He didn't worry about what they're going to say when he was in the, the pig farm, in the slop. But he had to say, I don't worry about what people said. I got to go back to the father. And he went back to his father. It is time. It's time for you to come home to the father. You are stumbling. You are falling. Fell and missed up and messed up on occasion. But a shame of all of it. Once that you were celebrated, now you're treated like this. So the outcast come back home to the Father. And so if you're going to change today, uh, that's number one, that you had to desire change. Desire change. Number two, you have to acknowledge your personal need. Number three, uh, you don't worry about what people said. Number four, you got to crowd to Jesus in faith with expectation. Cry out to Jesus in faith with expectation. 49 and 50 it says that in Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. <clears throat> and they called the blind man saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise he called it thee. And he cast away his garment and rose up and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus. So cry out to Jesus with expectation. Bartimaeus had no eyesight, but he was nearsighted. He knew who Jesus was. He called him. Jesus, son of David. He knew as he couldn't see. But man had faith that Jesus was the long waiting Messiah who could bring healing and hope not merely to the nation but to his life personal. He was convinced that God, not nobody else, he was convinced that God was passing by and he was not going to miss his opportunity that day. He did not sit quietly and think about it. He did not wish that the crowd was no longer down, that the crowd was large. I think he, I'll wait until another day and I'll come back later. He didn't do none of those. He stood right there as he knew Jesus was the only one. And you know that Jesus is the only one who could bring help to you and could heal him in this matter. Jesus is also passing through Pleasant Grove today. He's passing through your community today. He, he's begging you, don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity to encounter the one who can make a change in your life today. He can forgive your sin. He can make you right with the holy God. He can give you eternal life. Cry out to him in faith. Trust him to save you today. Trust him in coming into your life to make you the person he wants you to be. No one can cry out to Jesus in faith for you. No one can do that for you. You must do it yourself, and I will believe on Christ for you if I could. But you must do it yourself today. There was a movie um, out called Alive. Yeah, you got it with some expectation. This movie called Alive, it was some team members in Avalique. They became stranded in the snow, covered in the mountains. After a plane crash. Uh, in the plane crash, there were some killed, some teammates were killed, some of the family members even was killed. After a day of waiting for help, a plane flew over their location. They cried out screaming and waving their hand for the plane to see them, but they did not see them. They had to decide it, Pastor. You got to decide. They had to decide that they could no longer sit and wait to be found, 
They must leave where they are to begin searching for help. I tell you today, wherever you're at today, you got to go to Christ. You got to go to him. You can't change on your own. Don't try to do it on your own. You're no match for the devil, but you got to decide. There was a man, a young preacher, who was a young man desired to preach. And uh, he came up, he wanted to preach. A uh, change came over this man. And, uh, you know, you you begin to see things happen. And I never forget, uh, uh, he did his uh, trial sermon. He did his trial sermon. I like when they bring you out to do the trial sermon. They all the preachers with you and all of that stuff. They bring you out, you shouting the dog, you got your new suit on and your new shoes and everything. You two new Bibles and stuff, you ready to say the word. Well, this young man sermon was about um, illustration, analogy about how ungrateful this person was. This person was very ungrateful, not worthy, and he preached on this. And uh, one day that uh, this young man uh, was by my house, and we was drinking Paul, my son, wine. And he says to me that it don't taste right. And I said, give me that. Pull me some. Pull me some. I said, it tastes fine to me. What you mean it don't taste right? But there was a change coming in. Come on now. There was a change. Days came, pass after pass. I saw radical change. And we was cursing and we stopped cursing so much and as we went around, we didn't say things that we were saying before. I saw in him a radical change. But as he changed, he didn't ever try to treat nobody bad. At the end of his sermon, I never forget it. it been so long ago when he when he got through preaching about this person what was so bad and this person was this and that and they didn't deserve and how they had treated people. He said that person is me. I give you no other than Pastor Wells when he preached his message. I still remember it had been a long time, but he preached about himself that day, how Jesus had took him and changed his life. And as you admit to the reality that change is what we need, you must be willing to be open and honest with God about how you feel and, and, and what you feel and, and, and what you've done and what you expect things to begin to shift in your favor. It may not always be pretty. It may not always feel good. It may not always, it might hurt you and you'll shed tears, but the backside of obedience to the submitting to the care of the Lord Jesus Christ is beginning a new creation in you and a thought to you in Christ. Well, there was a song uh, made by uh, Walter Hawkins and uh, Tremaine Hawkins sung it. Boy, I can sing, I sang it, but I can't sing it. But, but, but it, it says... The song was called, A Change Have Come Over Me. It says, uh, he washed away all my sin. He made me whole. He washed me white as soon. He changed my life completely and now I sit. I sit at his feet to do what must be done. I work and work until he comes. A wonderful change have come over me. Yes, he changed me. My life is complete and now I sit. I sit at my Savior's feet to do what I must be done. I'm going to work and work until my Savior come. Uh, now, I'm not what I want to be. Oh, I'm not what I used to be. I'm not the same way. Thanks God. Thank God he changed my walk. He changed my talk. He changed my life for even change. Change my soul. I come a long ways in Jesus. And I come a long ways in Christ. I come a long ways and thank God that a wonderful change have came over my life. Now I want to talk about Jesus who came for all of us. Jesus came down in a body. He came down and he walked this earth. And he came down to bring a change about to all of us. He came down and changed our life. He came down and gave us eternal life. And that's why I'm here today. 
I'm so good and I'm so understanding. I'm so good and proud that God came to save. And it's only was one of us. He would have still came to save us. He died on a cross. He had to go through a lot of changes for all of us. To do what he did for us. And we can walk around and be just not treat him right. We walk around and don't praise him. We walk around and don't give him what he deserved. He got on the cross and died for us. He changed this whole world. And I come today to let you know that there must be a change in your life. Christ died on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. He got up on a Sunday morning. Got up on a Sunday morning. That's why we can stand now. Because we have the tree of life to eternal life. So today we talked about change. The desire for it. The need for it. And how it meets our need as well. We are dressed not worrying about what people think and going to our Savior with humble heart for what we desire and expect today. He promised. He died for all of us. Change has come over us. Thank you for the word. Amen. May God have a blessing to this word today. The doors of the church is open today. If you don't know Christ, if you're watching this broadcast today, raise your hand. Say, I receive your Christ into my life. I believe that you died for me. I believe that I'm a sinner. And I want you to come into my life. It's just that easy. We say, you repeat those words. You've been saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, oh come on, come on, come on. And radio land, TV land, wherever you are, put your hands together and thank God for the preacher and the preaching. Amen. What a powerful word. Sometimes preachers will get up behind other preachers. Sometimes it's out of jealousy and they'll try to kill the message. On nothing need to be said about this message, but praise God for it. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for the preaching. And let's thank God for the preacher. Amen. Yeah, and he's been working on that a long time. God worked that out of his uh, soul. God bless your heart. And he gave the invitation. If you happen to be listening and don't know Jesus Christ, very simple. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need salvation. And if you do that, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ came down for it through generations. And the scripture says, went to Calvary's cross and died. But he rose the third day morning. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that he got up. And the Bible says that if you believe that and confess your sins, that he'll save you. All you need to do is just by faith receive him. And maybe you who already know him, and maybe you, maybe there's some changes need to occur in your life. Maybe there's some things that still need to be cut off. He's told you, if you got that desire, it's going to happen. Well, whatever your case is, turn to the Lord. Again, we thank you, Reverend Johnson, for fixing up a good meal in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless your heart. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Amen. Can't nobody say it like the chef. Amen. Uh, Catrice Pruitt is going to come and she's going to give us a, a few words of announcement and I'll be right back and then we'll prepare uh, for the uh, benediction. Amen. Clap your hands again and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Listen to Catrice. The preaching chef, he can cook y'all, but what a meal he served us today. If you prayed the sinner's prayer, we want to hear from you at the conclusion of this broadcast. 
Send us a message through this Facebook page or contact us at 205-786-3351. Our heart's desire is that you decided to join the body of Christ and we want you to connect to a Bible-based, Christ-centered church. If you have decided to make the Grove your church home, we welcome you to our church family. Thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Let's worship God through the giving of our tithes and offerings. All contributions can be made by mail, drop-off service, online using PayPal, and Cash App. Speaking of ministry, our pastor has been ministering to us for 27 years. Pastor Wells is a leader, counselor, teacher, visionary, disciple, minister, advisor, friend, elder, and might I add a protector, especially during this pandemic because he only has our best interests and safety at heart. Not only us, the Grove Knights, but others, both near and far. Some of you are even on this broadcast today. He does all of this with his number one supporter, his ride or die, his help me, and our first lady, Sister Carol Wells, and their children. So on October 10th, the second Sunday, we will celebrate our pastor's 27th anniversary and bless them mightily. Did you hear that? Mightily. This is a time to change. Mask up, sleeve up. Take care of your spiritual, mental, and physical health. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything and all circumstances, give thanks. Have a blessed week. Amen. Let us thank uh, Patrice for doing what she do. She does it in such a good way. I like the way she kind of used that spontaneity. Oh, man. I'm still rocking and really. And I got a sermon in my heart right now. I got two or three of them as uh, Reverend Johnson was preaching. I won't, I, won't, I won't mess with you today. We just hold it for a later time. Amen. I'm excited just to see what God is doing in our midst. And let me tell you, continue to be praying for the Thompson family. Then also be praying for the Gooden family and make sure when you think about those elders who are going through, just put a little extra prayer on those. They are struggling. And then the Twyman family. Amen. Amen. Keep on praying. We know that a change is coming. And I want you to pray for this preacher because God has been with him a long time and shown up in with him these last 17 months as he's gone into that hospital system and tried to prepare food with shortages of personnel, yet working 10 and 12 hours, almost seven days a week at some time, and can't take that stuff and leave it at the job. It goes home with him to get a little sleep, got other things going on. Pray for this preacher, amen? And when he preaching like that, the devil don't like that. We're happy to know that uh, God got us on all sides. Well, it's time to go. We want you to never forget about what God is doing and know this without a doubt. Whatever you do for him, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and know that whatever God has attained for you to do, you can do all things through Christ because he strengthens you. Amen. Will you stand and let us receive the benediction today? And whatever you do, remember shots in the arm, mask on the face, Stay away from the big crowd. Do uh, lift up uh, our family, our one of the preacher family. That is uh, the right reverend. We call him Reverend Jay. Uh, and pray for his family. They've had to kind of stay away from their school system. Stuff is going on with the virus. And so they have to kind of stay away so that uh, when some occurs, there are some other things that have gone on with other folks. And we just need to know, man, this, this virus has not given up now it's affecting our little children so uh, we need to hear god and keep on praying amen let us receive the benediction father we thank you for for reverend johnson thank you god for preaching through him what a mighty
powerful, timely word, talking about a time for a change. And it is, Lord, we, we know that you've already made the change. Now, God, change us that we will be able to receive the change. We ask your blessings now, Lord, upon those prayer requests that we mentioned to you. And as we leave this place, never from your presence will we be able to escape. Go with us and keep us. Guide us, O thou great Jehovah. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and now forevermore. Sing with me. Amen. Amen. Sing. Amen. Hey, I love y'all and ain't nothing y'all can do about it. Have a blessed week this week. Be safe. Bless you.